In this video, I wanna share with you five reasons why old friends will make you poor. Now you see, in January 2021, after having lived in San Diego, California for 14 years, pretty much half of my life, I decided to move locations. I decided to go from living in California where my parents lived, where my in-laws lived, where I went to school, where I got married, where I simply knew everybody and moved to Miami, a, a, a new place that I've never lived in. I did not know the, the streets. I did not know the city. I did not know anyone. And I made the move. And I know that my wife until today says that she's gotten kidnapped. You know, it wasn't an easy, uh, uh, you know, an easy decision for her because she loves her family. She wanted to be by her family. And, and personally, I remember the first week of moving to Miami, you know, I just felt very homesick. And that's simply because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. So that's the very first thing that why old friends keep you poor because of your comfort zone. Because you see, what happens is that after a while, after you know someone for a little while, you start getting comfortable about what it is that you're doing, especially if you met these friends when you were in high school. You've known them for such a long amount of time and you have so much chemistry and oftentimes who you were before isn't who you are today and you guys get stuck in that old mentality and that old habit and those old kind of routines of who you were and then you stay stuck there and this is why i personally made the move i made new friends i got out of my comfort zone i made friends that actually are you know expanding my horizon expect expanding my perspectives and friends that now are on the same level of where I am and some actually above where I am. So that way they can take me to the next level. And when I say levels, I'm not only talking about financial success. And that's something that you have to keep in mind and you have to be very aware of is that you don't want to only make friends that are above you financially or that are more successful than you financially. You want people that are above you in all other areas of your life. Personally, right now, I have five pillars of success because over the last 12 years, I thought that success meant how much money you have in the bank, how big your business is, how many employees you have. But then what I realized is that success really is or has to be in all other areas of your life because who cares if you're a billionaire yet you have a miserable marriage or you're not connected with your kids or you're divorced or whatever, right? And, you know, I'm not saying that being divorced is, is a bad thing or that it's your fault, but if you, you could do something about it and you didn't because you were busy with work, who cares about how much success that you actually have at work? What I realized is that the friends that I made back in 2004, 2005, 2010, especially when I moved to San Diego, California in 2007, simply are not aligned with, with me 25 years old, 30 years old, right? Because I was an, a, a different, a completely different person. So that's the second thing is that you are a different person than you were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, right? And maybe you guys used to align on certain things before, but now you have become more aware. Now you have different goals in life. Now there are other things that you want to shoot for in life that those old friends may not resonate with you and may not be thinking the same on the same level. And again, I'm not only talking about finances. In my 20s, in my early 20s, 20, 21, 22, 23, I would party seven days a week, right? And this was who I was. This was who, you know, this was the person that I that I kind of, um, that I, I guess, vibed with. I vibed with people that were single, that liked to party, that liked to sleep around and do all kinds of what, you know, young 20-year-olds would do, right? And that's what my friends used to do. Now, at 32 years old, if I've got a friend that's single that's going out every day and hooking up and, and partying every night and, and you know coming home at 5 o'clock in the morning, waking up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, that's not going to necessarily resonate with who I am today, with my identity today, right? Because again, right now, last night I was out with my wife and it was 7.30, we were having dinner and I'm yawning. By the time it's 9.30, I'm asleep. 6.15 every day, my alarm goes off. And usually I'm up before then, right? A friend that literally got home at four or five in the morning, it's not gonna be able to wake up that early, right? And so our chemistry or our identity today is completely different than before. So this is why the second thing is that you are a completely different person. And the old friends that used to resonate with you 10, 12, 15, 20 years ago, don't necessarily resonate with you today. 
Now, if you're enjoying this so far, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. And also drop in the comments one thing about your friends that you believe maybe you have some friends that have that you've kept around but in the back of your mind you know that you could do more so drop below what is one thing that you believe that you could do better if you had new friends you know at least twice per year i try to go back to san diego to visit my family and when i do i visit my friends as well oftentimes i'm not talking about all of them a couple of them whenever we hang out you know on their days off they're playing video games you know when they have extra time they're you know, just wasting time, whether if it's let's go to a lounge, smoke hookah, whether if it's let's go here, whether if let's go there. And they're not thinking about, well, I've got a spouse, I've got a girlfriend, you know, that I can spend some quality time with. Let me spend some quality time with my family. Let me work on my business to improve my business. And a lot of them are still working a job, you know, and, and that's not, I'm not saying that that's bad, but they don't even have the the bandwidth to expand within the job because I've seen a lot of very successful, financial successful people that have done it within their job and have always made sure that they get into a, a business that there is more opportunity as they as they you know progress and that they do everything they can to improve on that opportunity but for a couple of those friends they're just kind of stuck where they are where they were 10 years ago and i look at my journey and i've literally over the last 10 12 years i've launched seven nine businesses seven of which have failed over the last two and a half three years alone i've generated over 25 million dollars online these people are still either in the same jobs in the same place financially spiritually emotionally and just still like you know dating someone and dumping them three months later just kind of not really progressing and you see when i look at myself in 12 years from now 15 years from now 20 years from now and then where they're projecting their life the goals are not aligned so that's the third thing is that your goals are not aligned because again who you were before 15 20 years ago is a completely different person than you are today i hope and this is why it's important for you to have people that are that have aligned goals and unfortunately this is also the reason why some marriages or many marriages especially in america there's a a pretty big uh, um you know a pretty big number of marriages that don't work out because when you met each other in high school or in college or whatever and who you are 20 years later is a completely different person and you have completely different goals and this is why it's important to have people around you that have aligned goals with yours now i'm not saying that you guys both need to do exactly the same in the future but you're both progressing because humans need progress in their lives in order for us to stay excited in order for us to stay motivated and wake up every day wanting to do more is that we need to progress we need to have something in the future pulling us so that way we can keep working towards it unless i mean you know and if you don't have that if you don't have that progress if you don't have that growth in your life you're gonna feel dead inside and you're simply not going to have purpose to live your day-to-day -day life. And this takes me to my fourth point. But before I do that, if this is your first time to the channel, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And also, maybe share this video with someone that maybe needs to hear these things. So the fourth thing is that, you know, when I was in, in California and when I was uh, on my, you know, on my days off, whenever I wanted to take a day off or whenever i wanted to hang out with my with my girlfriend at the time now my wife we would go out with our friends because these are the friends that we knew and the conversations are always about things that don't align with me anymore again they used to align with me five six seven ten years ago but they do not align with me anymore and what i realized is that as the more time goes by and as more time i i invest in and i i i hang out with them i realized that whenever i come out of that room i feel dumber you know i feel like energy has been sucked out of my body i feel like i've been put in a place where people just like kept on like sucking my blood and now i'm like just so drained because of the conversations because i'm thinking about like I want to accomplish this amount of money. I want to impact this in many lives. I want to have this incredible relationship with my wife. I want to have beautiful kids. I want to build this home. I want to do this. And they're talking about Call of Duty. They're talking about how Nancy cheated on James and how this stuff. And so what I've realized over time is that they're holding me back. And so is, that's the fourth thing is that they are holding you back to go to the places that you need to go. And holding back could be the conversations that you guys have. It could be the the things that you see them do or not do, right? Someone holding you back doesn't necessarily come to you, you know, need to be someone that comes to you and says, stop doing this 
oh my God, why are you changing? This is not gonna succeed. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys can resonate with this. When you talk about your business or this new idea that you're talking about or whatever, people that don't align with you are always gonna shoot them down. They're always gonna say, well, this is a scam. Well, this doesn't work. Well, this, this, or this, that. They could be holding you back that way. But also another thing of ways that people could be holding you back is not cheering for you, right? Because you have to look at everything and every person in your life as either a liability or an asset. They're either helping you grow or they're taken away from you. They're holding you back, right? Or they are just waste. They're just like energy sucking waste. And this is why I, I have implemented the, the concept of KISS, keep it simple, stupid in my life. And this goes with everything. That's why you always see me wearing black. That's why my home is very simple. This is why I simply don't like to store things in storage. I, you know, I don't like to have too many conversations in my text messages inbox. I don't like to, I like to see my in, email inbox completely empty. I like to see my notifications completely empty. I don't have any notifications or any apps that come through to my phone because anything that comes through to you, it's either lifting you up or it's sucking things away from you, taking you down, right? And so if someone is not cheering for you, they're just there, they are just complete void and they're a complete waste and they're gonna take bandwidth and energy from you to even think about them. It's like, why is that person there again? And so this is how people could be holding you back. Now we're off to our number five, but before I do that, be sure to stay until the end because there's gonna be a video that I want you to watch after this one that's going to absolutely blow your mind. And number five, it's, it's kind of a twist because when I realized this thing, I simply was like, you know, I was dumbfounded because I didn't even realize that I was doing that to them. So something about me, and, and this could be true about you as well, but I put expectations on people on how they should show up, on how they should behave, on how they should, you know, just be, right? And this is something that I'm still working on, but I know it takes a long time. I'm 32 years old and I've been pretty much programmed and been doing things for the same way for 32 years. So it's going to be kind of difficult to break out of that habit, but I'm still working on it. I'm still work in progress, right? What I've realized is that when I put an expectation on someone to show up a certain way and they don't, I become upset and I become disappointed and I become mad and I become frustrated. Therefore, I go into a, what Tony Robbins calls a miserable state. And that's not a good place to be in because you cannot make the, the, the right decisions. You, know, you can't live a, a happy and fulfilled life if you are in a miserable state. You always wanna be in a beautiful state, which is creative, excited, joyful, uh, you know, feeling the successful. Uh, fulfilled, right? That's a beautiful state. What I've realized is that when I put an expectation on someone that they need to show up that way, that's my personal expectations on them. That's my version of perfect. But what I realized is that I have, I, I, I'm not thinking about their perfect or their definition of perfect. Because to me, my definition of perfect is X, Y, Z. To them, their definition of perfect is A, B, C. And that I'm not being fair to them. Therefore, I'm holding them back. So that's number five, is that I am holding them back just because I want to be successful financially, just because I want to have great relationships, just because I want to have a, I want to be a spiritual human being, just because I want to build wealth, just because I want to have fulfillment in my life, doesn't mean every single human on planet Earth should be the same. And maybe, maybe, because that's my definition of perfect, right? Maybe their definition of perfect is perfect for them and they're content with that. I'm not saying that I need to reshape myself to fit their mold. I'm just saying that if their mold doesn't fit my my perfect or whatever, we have unaligned goals. Therefore, we should go our separate ways. And this is why old friends could actually make you poor. Simply because your expectations, you're putting set of expectations on them and they're not going to show up that way and you're going to feel like shit and that's going to take bandwidth and energy from you therefore you're not going to have time and energy and bandwidth to focus on the things that will make you successful so you are in fact holding them back as well as they are holding you back so just to recap the first thing is comfort zone you guys simply were together you met each other you were in, in a place and now you're comfortable so they're holding you back the second thing is they're holding you back the third thing is you are holding them back because simply you are putting an expectation on them and you don't you know they're not going to operate at that level and therefore you're going to be holding them back 
The fourth thing is that you have unaligned goals and you're just not going to see the future the same way. And the fifth thing is that you are a completely different person than you were 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago when you met these people. Now, if you click here and watch this video, this is a morning routine that I learned from my billionaire mentor about six months ago that has completely transformed my life. And I know it'll transform yours as well. Outside of that, I'll see you there. Take care.